What's happening you lovely people? Welcome back to my channel, Danny FYR, find your reason. I'm Danny B, aka Stan, aka whatever the f you want to call me. Uh, today's video I'm going to switch over a little bit um, and try, try something else. It's uh, from a channel called Nutty History. And the video is called uh, The Worst Punishments in Ancient Rome. So we're going to have a look at that and see, see how bad the Romans were. We know about crucifixions and everything else, but let's have a look at this one. It's only a 10 minute video, so let's get into it. The Roman Empire was the mightiest empire on earth, one that had to maintain order amongst its people. Law and order, as some may say. Ancient Romans abscond from using death as a means to punish crimes unless they really had to. But when they did, they got absolutely methodical and creative in executing death sentences and made medieval punishments look like a walk in the park. Welcome to Nutty History, and let's find out what punishment was like in ancient Rome. The ancient Roman Empire was the center of the earth for almost a thousand years, and every road in the world led to Rome back then. At its height during the reign of Emperor Trajan, the Roman Empire ruled more than 45 million people spread across Europe, Asia, and Africa. Not so long. But obviously, in those not all times. these people were law abiding. Some were rebels, some were corrupt, and some were outright criminals. In fact, no difference from them people to people today. You're always going to have the same element in society. Murderers, the R words, the, you know, the criminals. That just throughout the ages. With more than a million people residing in Rome, the city itself was a dirty and dangerous place. A maze of side streets and slums. Crime was a common occurrence on a daily basis, and Roman guards had to do a lot more than correct grammar of a graffiti drawing miscreant. Understand? Yes, sir. Now, right out under time. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll see you, sir. However, instead of an organized police force, Romans had vigils. These vigils were 7,000 strong and were charged with dealing with everyday crimes like theft and to capture and enslave people who might attempt to flee from justice. Oh, yeah. The Roman guards were only called if the matter would go beyond the capabilities of vigils. For example, in cases of riots, rebellion. So basically, they were like um, the Roman police. Yeah, basically. But if if a crime was too, too much, then they'd take it back to the generals and the army. That's what it sounds like. Oof. or civil unrest. Meanwhile, matters of imperial interest and the emperor's security were in the hands of the Praetorian Guard. This is a Smile Direct Club aligner. It's how Smile Direct Club safely... In theory, Roman laws were written in a manner to discourage people from committing crimes by making an example of the guilty party with the punishment. However, the reality was that people would get punished according to their status and wealth in Roman society. Uh. No wonder modern judiciary resembles ancient Rome law so much. Like most of the ancient law systems, Romans followed the principle of personality. That means the law was only applicable to Roman citizens. Foreigners, well, they had no rights. And unless protected by some treaty between their state and Rome, they could be seized like ownerless pieces of property by any Roman. However, with time, diplomacy... That's crazy, aren't it? You're a foreigner in Roman land. They can just basically grab you and say, you're mine now. Strange history, periods in history, the way humans acted towards one another. But, I mean, I guess that's how we uh, evolved, wasn't it? It became more and more crucial for the Roman Empire. Therefore, the increasing commercial interests of Rome forced it to protect the foreigners by some decree of justice. This is why the Jus Civil, or civil laws, were replaced by a more flexible and applicable Jus Gentium, or the Law of Nations in 3rd century BC, 
protecting foreigners more or less like the civilians. The legal procedure established by Romans was the most crucial part of the judiciary as it was the grandfather of the legal system that we use today. Roman goddess Justitia can attest to that as she has been standing in the majority of legal courts of justice for more than two millennia now. The legal procedure, or dihes actionis, was a step-by-step -step process of detailed bureaucracy. First, the plaintiff approached the defendant in public and called for him to come to court. If he refused, he could be taken there by force. The trial itself was divided into two parts. The first was a preliminary hearing held before a magistrate who would decide whether there was an issue to be contested, and if so, what it was. Each step in this procedure was extremely formal. If the wrong words were used by either party, that party might lose the case. After the issues were delineated, both parties agreed upon a judex, who was neither a lawyer nor a magistrate, but a prominent layman to try the case. The proceedings before the judex were more informal. Advocates spoke and gave evidence, and witnesses often appeared. The judex made a decision, but had no power to execute it. If the defendant refused to pay the fine or make restitution within a certain period, he could be brought by force to the magistrate. Then his property could be seized, or he could be made a slave to the plaintiff to work off the debt or property claim. Later, as the cases became more and more complex, the magistrates were given more power over resolving the case themselves instead of sending it to a judex. This is what I want to Roman punishment know. actually varied depending on one's position in Roman society. A slave had no rights whatsoever and was literally treated as merchandise. Beatings and lashings were like free real estate when it came to punishing them for any minor offense. However, when masters really wanted to humiliate them, slaves would be forced to carry a piece of wood around their neck. This was called the furca, letting the world know that the wood-carrying slave had been very, very naughty. A slave caught committing theft, adultery, or forgery could be punished with death by crucifixion. But it is worth noting that being merchandise, the slave also had a cost, and therefore the corporal punishment could never be too harsh in order not to permanently impair him unless the circumstances were extremely grave. Roman citizens, on the other hand, were very rarely sentenced to death. By law, a Roman citizen could be condemned to death only if he committed treason or patricide. Furthermore, in all instances, a Roman citizen could not be crucified. Romans were largely punished by monetary fines, confiscation of property, infamy, banishment, and at worst, slavery whenever a fine would not be enough to get them out of their troubles. But it was the capital punishment with which Romans would get real creative. Let's just say they didn't believe in a clean, quick death. Crucifixion is obviously the most popular example of it. But Romans didn't just stop there. Poina culé, or punishment of the sack, applied mostly to Romans who were found guilty of parricide. The victim was put into a leather sack together with several animals, including a monkey, a snake, a dog, and a rooster. After all of them were put into the sack, it was sewn together and thrown into a river. Needless to say, from there on, it was a struggle of survival to the last among... So all them animals will have, like, ripped them a bit, to, ripped them a bit as well, trying to get out of... Yeah, man, that's, that's gruesome, that one, like, isn't it? ...on these forced companions. Romans didn't have a weird choking fetish. It was the other way around. Spilling blood inside the ancient city of Rome was considered sacrilege and thus was regarded as taboo. This is why strangulation was the most common method employed for punishment by death. However, it wouldn't be a Roman punishment if it didn't have a flair about it. The condemned would first be paraded all around the city before being brought to the Roman Forum or back to his cell. There, the executioner would simply strangle the convicted felon to death with a rope if he wasn't already dead by embarrassment. That's crazy, man. Immolation. What's our fire burn? After the great fire of Rome killed hundreds of people, Emperor Nero accused Christians of starting it. Yeah, Nero was, uh, he was a bit wacky, wasn't he? A bit loony. Wasn't right in the head. As retribution, Romans had thousands of Christians who were persecuted and subsequently burned alive. However, it didn't just stop there. Christians were burned as early as the 2nd century with a first recorded chronicle of Polycarp, a Christian bishop. 
Constantine the Great added burning to death as a punishment for multiple other offenses as well, including sexual assault. The convicted were forced to put on a tunica molesta, a papyrus-based outfit that was smeared with wax and was tied to a high pole. Burning pitch and lard were poured from the top, which incinerated the helpless victim. Ironically, Christians would later use the same method to burn thousands of women during witch hunts. If you were a soldier in the Roman army, you were the better part of a great group. If your group was considered to be cowardly, decimation was used as a punishment to set things straight. The entire cohort of about 480 men was divided into groups of 10, and every 10th man was to be executed. The word decimation simply means removal of the 10th. So, yes, this was quite literally a permanent removal. That's crazy, The 10th that. man who had drawn the shortest straw was beaten, clubbed... See, you're even... Uh learn the origin of words. Decimation just means the, the gone of ten. It's crazy. Abdor stoned to death by the other nine members of his group while the rest of the cohort watched, awaiting the same fate for them. Imagine that. You've got to stand there watching. I mean, I suppose it, it resembles today when... Uh, you know, people in other countries are held against the will. I don't want to say, I can't say too many words because YouTube will flag it and all that, so... Yeah, let's get on with it. You shall have a golden crown that men shall tremble to behold. One of the most satisfying scenes of Game of Thrones was to watch Khal Drogo pour molten gold on Viserys' head when he demanded the crown he was promised. The innovative killing scene from George R. R. Martin wasn't exactly the brainchild of his imagination, but a callback to history, Roman history to be more precise. Romans loved to have molten gold or molten lead poured into the mouth of people charged with a death sentence. Oh. Surprisingly, this ridiculously horrific method of execution continued at least until the 16th century. The last recorded That's death crazy. by molten gold was suffered by a greedy Spanish governor in the colonial settlement in Ecuador in the year 1599. Now, whether or not he got to keep the gold, well, that's up for debate. That's crazy. And also, I wonder if uh, grave robbers, after they were buried, I wonder if grave robbers went and tried to open the body to extract the gold. Do you know what I mean? And I can't believe it went on until that long. I mean, 1599. According to some historians, Roman Emperor Domitian, who ruled from 81 AD to 96 AD, was apparently so perturbed by the presence of Christians in the Roman Empire that he came up with new methods of punishing them to death. One of his favorite methods was to strip the victim naked and put them inside a barrel that was closed with only their heads sticking out. The victim was then force-fed and smeared with honey and milk to attract insects and oh, parasites no. to feed upon the victim alive. The barrel was put into the hot sun to attract a swarm of creatures that would feast on the body of the helpless victim. Oh, this could no. go on for multiple weeks until the person inside the barrel died and their body rotted inside it. I mean, what kind of people came up with these ways to, uh, to get rid of people, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm gonna call it right now. I think I found the single biggest Mental? productivity hack of 2021. It's this Google Chrome extension called When execution became One of the spot. reasons Romans yeah. enjoyed getting creative with death sentences was that it was also a source of entertainment for them. So there is no surprise that they turn execution into a sport as well. And once again, animals got the short end of the stick. One of the most popular execution methods involved the convicted being ripped apart by wild animals. A sentence referred to as damnatio ad bestias. Many Christians suffered this fate as they were sentenced to death for being part of this dangerous new cult. It's estimated that nearly half a million people were killed inside the Roman Colosseum alone, many of those suffering this horrible fate. The Nacio ad Bestias was usually programmed between the events of the Nacio and Gladiator fights. The Nacio itself was a form of punishment. I think we all know about this part, uh, this part with the gladiators and the youth uh, use animals and stuff, you know. I think we all know this. This served for war prisoners and undisciplined gladiators 
where they were forced to fight hungry, desperate beasts to death. Bonaccio was so popular that it caused the extinction of many predatory animals from Europe. That's, that's terrible, that man, to cause the extinction of animals from Europe. Damn. And he's the major one, isn't he? No punishment method is as related to ancient Romans as crucifixion, thanks to the story of Jesus of Nazareth. Crucifixion combined multiple forms of torture. After being nailed to the cross, which is in itself a horrible ordeal to go through, the victim would hang on the cross for multiple days, most probably with dislocated shoulders before eventually suffocating to death. If this took longer, the executioner used a sledgehammer to break the femur bones of the victim, God. which is one of the most painful experiences a human being can go through. Yeah, so I he would imagine. suffocate much faster. This was not an easy way to go by any means. So, which ancient punishment would you vote to avoid? Tell All us in the comments. Them. And if you want to learn more about judicial systems and crimes in ancient times, check out our videos about what punishment was like in ancient Greece and ancient Egypt. Well, thanks for watching that History. was do not forget not to smash the history that like button. And what punishment was like in ancient Rome. Um yeah, that one with the gold that was I can't imagine that. Just pouring gold into your mouth, ugh, dying that way, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't know, come up with these sort of ways to kill people, like putting that one in a barrel with only your head showing, but then putting the honey on you, letting the insects bite on you for weeks, you know what I'm saying? Crazy. Well, I hope you learned something anyway from that video, I mean, it's a bit different to the videos I've been doing. I thought uh, I'd check it out, see if we can learn anything. And I learned where the word decimation come from also. So, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, as every subscriber helps, I need subscribers. I only have eight at the minute still. But I'm, I'm sure it'll grow as time goes on. Um, but anyway, I'm out for this video, you know how it go people, till next time, oh, I haven't done my outro, I'm Danny B, aka Stan, aka whatever the f you wanna call me, I'm out for this video, you know how it go people, until next time, peace.